always by my mainest man, Willie Saylor, Willie in the house. And we are here, brought to you today by ASICS. We thank ASICS for their sponsorship of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. Please buy ASICS products, shoes, shirts, pants, socks, and more. So yesterday, Coleman Scott was here. Coleman Scott. The Olympic bronze medalist, the head coach of the UNC Tar Heels, was in the mix. Did you? Did I you didn't even get to see him. Well, yeah, you went. You went home at like one o'clock. I came. I did the who's number one show. I didn't even know he was coming. You packed it up, packed it in. Well, they came here to this. This is so we have two little. We have two spots here at Flow. We got two spots. We got this Cesar Chavez joint. It's a little smaller, more low key. We have the studio here, and then we have the the main HQ now mm-hmm. on Springdale Road. If you're interested, nine seven nine. Come on by. Say hello. <laughs> Willie may or may not be there. Um, but yeah, Coleman Scott was here. We're doing a. Uh, we're working on. I guess we can let this out. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We're doing a a weight cutting documentary. It's going to be something that is. Uh, it's not just a wrestling project, although it's going to obviously have a lot to do with wrestling. But you know, grappling, MMA, etc. Gymnastics. Uh, no. No. I don't think so. Um, although maybe pr- you know they don't have to make weight in gymnastics, but they do make they themselves diet small. Diet pretty hard. Yeah, um, not safe. So, I don't know. I was here. I didn't even know he was coming. I was here till noon. I missed him. Anyway, the spike. So, you saw a video on uh, probably Twitter and Facebook and stuff of him playing spike ball. Mm-hmm. Biggest question for the uh, Olympic bronze medalist. How do he do? He's pretty good. How good is he in spike he, ball? All right. So, as he made a couple plays, you're like, all right, we are confirmed. We are playing with an Olympic level athlete. <laughs> he was like, there was one. Actually... Spay was on, uh, I think we're his Periscope. So if you go on like Flo, if you go on Flo's Twitter, I think you could see it. Um, but he made one where like he kind of like was running and he like flipped it back and it landed on perfectly. It was pretty obnoxious actually. Um, a lot of power, as you can imagine. Yeah, I saw a couple. So of power Ryan, shots. so Ryan Holmes crushes it, right? Like he hits it really hard. His arms are enormous, but Coleman, he he hit the ball higher in the air than I've seen anyone hit it. I saw, so a lot I saw of one of his smashes. Well, Ryan hits it hard, but he's not always 100% accurate. Well, t- either was Coleman. <laughs> uh, Coleman you know had a couple of did not. We have, um, we have a young lady here that works at Flow that was on Penn State championship volleyball teams. Yeah. Like national championship teams. Katie Cabas, Googler. And she just like, she just like nonchalantly hits it, and the thing is like a Nolan Ryan fastball. It's it's dangerous. You have to you have to back up so far. We can't even play indoors really anymore because they go it goes everywhere and people get a little you know. But um, the thing about I want how much spike ball does Coleman play? Because the thing he about, said, hey, he went into it and he said, better. Hey, I'm pretty good. We play a lot. Really? He said Joey Ward's the best guy in the room. No kidding. So. Well, one thing that was very obvious, we probably picked up Spike Ball. I, were we late to the party, early to the party? I we're, don't know. I think we're late because we're I, late to the party? Team USA has been playing Spike Ball for years. So I've been watching everybody on the Flow staff play Spike Ball for a couple months now. And in the beginning, it's just, you know, a little helter-skelter. But now you guys are like, there's teamwork, there's strategy, there's, there's I don't there's not plays, but there's things going on there's uh, you guys got really good so. well yeah Kyle Bracky could probably speak to this just the level of of athleticism we've we've begun to display in, in the spike ball realm yeah it's come a long way <laughs> literally at first like I don't know if someone just bought it and brought it into flow sports and just like put it over there where we have like the basketball and stuff and we're like okay this looks fun and we didn't know the rules Mm-hmm. We just made up our own right and then someone walked by and was like that's not how you play <laughs> told us how to play and then ever since then uh, we come in to work to play spike ball. Yes. Yeah, flow spike ball live. But here's the thing, though, about our l- long spike ball intro. I feel like wrestlers have really picked up on it. Like, it, it's sort of a wrestling game I think now, right? Well, like it's the program. ideal. Here's here's what we have not yet experienced, is playing it on wrestling mats, which is the absolute best way. You could dive. You could be crazy. If we got to play it on, on wrestling mats, and that's why it's an ideal wrestling room game. Yeah. Good warm up. So yeah, we so love we are, love spike ball. So how was Coleman other than spike ball? He's he's good. He's good. good. He seemed great. He's uh, we talked a little about the open, the guys he's getting ready. Of course, it, the U.S. Open falls on a weird time for the college schedule, and they have UNC has exams Monday, right? So like the Monday after the open. So there's only a few guys where like schedule and everything works out for them to go. But obviously Tony Ramos is going to be there. A guy I'm really excited to watch. 
is Austin O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Want to see how he does? I'm not even sure which weight. I don't know if he's registered at this point or not. I didn't say he's not registered. I would. Uh, so he wouldn't be a, a 65. He would be probably. Like, I imagine he's probably at 70, 70. Which 70 is already fire. 70 is already loaded. So I really want to see him because this dude. Austin O'Connor smashed Troy Heilman to start the year. It was a wrestle off, whatever. It what still that, happened. Nine four, maybe in the wrestle off. It was then, not close. And then Heilman went on to, you know, do excellent all year. What he plays fourth? No. No. He was like. He was fourth. Really? Pretty sure he was oh fourth. My yeah. Gosh. So he got fourth. He got fourth. He got beaten in his wrestle off. Um, <clears throat> and he was excellent all year. It wasn't fluky or nothing. He was top no. top five guy. Um. But, yeah, that's an interesting point about it being a busy season and where the U.S. Open lies for these college coaches. You know, one thing a lot of people don't think about or it doesn't come up all the time is the schedule for the college coaches is just so saturated. There's no real weekend. There's no real weekend off um, after NCAs. You know, they start they start their freestyle training. They're got, they still got to do recruiting stuff. Um that, that's the thing I think that constantly gets, you know, they're going to flow nationals and pass down the line is is the recruiting. I feel like they're not able to do it year round and really mm-hmm. like study the guys and learn about them. Like you see who who stands out, who wins the big tournaments. But I'm I'm betting that's where a lot of these. That's why a lot of these gyms, uh, you know, whoever a Heilman, et cetera. That's why the, a lot of these guys probably aren't found is because man. It's tough to find guys like that when you're you're trying to balance academics and training. Yeah, I think probably I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but probably wrestling more than any other sport. If you play, if you play basketball and watch a tape and have measurables, mm-hmm. um, you can get a pretty good idea, right, of what that basketball player is going to be in college and the pros. And if you watch tape and have measurables in football, same thing. In wrestling. It takes a little bit more than to just look at results, than maybe even to just watch uh, watch video. He's like, you have to know what his character. You have to know his work ethic, and that takes so much effort. I, I mean, we're going down the rabbit hole yeah, here, I but know. it's the it's the um, the sketch on. That's why uh, when Prowl was first introduced, and they had the wrestlers going. That you know that Prowl's first iteration was like Prowl came up. That's interesting. They, they were on the uh, Final X tweaked that right. Uh-huh. They, they were like they would have had to been on the road like for a month, and the coaches I talked to were like, "Man, we got other stuff that th- that'll be this will be nonstop." They didn't like it. Yeah. All right, from Prowl to DeSanto. Update: I was paying the young man a visit. The young man. Ch- the young man Austin DeSanto. So still. Vying for for I mean he's still being actively recruited by multiple schools and Iowa staying hot on his case so they're they're headed to visit him maintain and I, it sounds to me like that's where the lean is for yeah. for DeSanto so Iowa Rutgers who else in the mix I don't know it's, I think Penn State's I think Penn State's in the mix personally I, and a couple of other guys we should we should work to follow up with those central michigan guys Mm -hmm. justin oliver mason smith those are i don't know if they're a package deal i would assume not but there's a lot of free agents on the market right justin oliver mason smith devin skatska skatska desanto and connor schramm now here and here's a well this kind of segues perfectly to edinburgh you've got sean russell who has asked for a release Mm -hmm. um don't know for sure. Dakota Gear, maybe you know. Dakota Gear was like non-committal. I talked to him, and he's like, "I'm not sure." I say, "Sticking around, or you, you know, you're looking around." He's like, "I'm not sure." So he's not sure. So he's thinking about it. Sounds right? like he's not sure. But Russell wants a release. He's supposed to get one now. Bruce Baumgartner is like stepped down as the AD. He's moving to a different role at Edinburgh. Evidently has not did not sign his release so russell seemingly hanging in limbo that's a goofy situation right very goofy no if there's no day ad in place right he moves out they don't replace him quite yet who signs the release yeah and what couldn't he just like signed it all right now i'm out yeah maybe can he still sign it i don't know there's got to be there has to be an acting ad yeah someone they just have to like 
put someone in the role till they fill it. How about you? No, so, actually, <laughs> Willie, people have been hitting me up. They said, all right, Bracky chased his dream for, for West Virginia. They said, why haven't you applied for the Edinburgh position? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Well, what are your qualifications? Smart, good looking. I mean, okay, that's what I got. They also have a Super 32 champ committed. Who's that? Uh, Cody Mulligan. Mm-hmm. Hercules would, Mulligan. Wouldn't be a bad pickup for if anybody needs a 84-97-ish type Dang, player. I hope – I personally, I would like these guys to stay at Edinburgh, or at least some of them. Don't everyone leave. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, we'll go last year. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I think there's more going on at this school, not in a nefarious way, but just like we've mentioned it, the future – just uncertain there in general. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to see. I want. I would like to see everybody stay there, honestly, and them to get a good coach in there and and have another. I like the Edinburghs and the Clarions and the Bloomsburgs and the Riders. You know. Mm-hmm. So we'll keep you posted on what's going on there. Um, someone asked, "What other matches do we want to see at Beat the Street?" So it sounds like it's going to be. USA versus Cuba slash Nigeria. I think, is it Nigerian women? I yes. would imagine women. Yeah. yeah. Nigerian women. So, who on the Cuban, they've got a couple good lightweights. I mean, obviously, Bon versus anyone, that's great. They've got a Tobie, really good 65. Or was he, was he 70 for World Cup? He, I, don't, I don't know. He was 65 because well, he, he beat uh, Aliyev. 65. So I'd love to see him. Wrestling Nomad, you're going to know Cuba better. What, what's their 57's name? Uh, Well, that's the the question. They had a U23 champ. Yes, him. Uh, name, I believe, Rainieri Ortega. I'd like to see him wrestle. I'd like yes. to see um, the winner of 86, which is at this point looking like David Taylor, wrestle Tori Blanca, Caralta. They had a 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four match at Uregan. Salah should always be involved whenever Cuba is there no matter uh, how big or out of shape he is exactly Salas should be involved it doesn't then, matter uh, Franklin Marin Castillo versus uh, Greasy sounds like fun. oh my gosh yeah and then Cuba's Bo- nasty yeah. and then Boney Rodriguez why not let's always get him involved he should always be involved yes he's I'll, like I'll wrestle him God oh give, for the fans I will let him what I will let him reverse lift me all over the mat Nomad. So listen, you wrestled me and you vomited your I'll only do it for twenty five and broke your shoulder. And broke your shoulder. Do you know what Bond would do to you? I don't know, but I can but I kinda love it. Decent benefits here, like health insurance and stuff. I will I'll I support that. There you go. I don't, he'll die. We could do a handicap. He'll die as he lived. Like even if he has You saw him wrestle Christian, he broke his shoulder and another time he puked Chipotle for two hours. And the other time he couldn't Touch his toes. You had to put his socks on. The <sighs> we could do a handicap match: Boney Rodriguez versus two of us. I don't know. I none si- of us have are signing up for that. I yeah, seriously. All right. Could yeah. Nomad? Could you and I score a point on on Boney Rodriguez collect simultaneously? No. I don't. We'd have to do the where I I I get on all fours behind him and you push him over and we get four. That's hey. what I was thinking. It, it can't be with anything wrestling related. It has to be all smoke and mirrors. Yeah. A complete trick. Okay. Yeah, you I don't. Guys will have to have weapons or something. Yeah, he would. He would just incapacitate one of us and then just take care of the other one. So that's what we're gonna get, right? Uh, so yeah. Gilman, Gilman versus Ortega. That's Ortega's good, man. Oh my gosh, yeah, he's great. Um, that U twenty three bracket you won was outstanding. And so the question was, because trials are like two days later. But we'll get the we'll get the U.S. Open winners. So well, n- not U.S. Open winners. You'll get the U.S. Open winners who get buys to Final X, which would be like David Taylor, right? Jaden Cox if he wins. With sixty-one. Uh, yep. Whoever wins sixty-one. So, so so essentially, if you win U.S. Open, it's a, it's to sit in Final X. Finals. Sixty-five as well. Yeah, it's to sit in Final X f- finals, mm-hmm. and it's also to wrestle at Beat the Streets. Essentially. What about who could Dake wrestle? Uh, Nomad. Uh, Lopez Ascui. Oh my gosh, he's not quite what he once was. But keep getting them checks, Lopez Ascui. All these, <laughs> all these guys. I don't really care how old they are. They're fun to watch. They're ageless. Yeah. Who's the sixty-one that beat Logan last year? Oh, the kid with the gigantic head. <laughs> That's his name. That's his name. Yeah. Hold on. 
Talk amongst he, he had a nice flat top, as I recall. Okay, so that guy at 61 versus, like, whoever wins. Craig six- McCourty, I think his name is. <laughs> <laughs> like, four people are going to get that joke, but yeah. it's a pretty good one. That guy's got a refrigerator for a skull. The best is when he rides his motorcycle. Who? Craig. I've never seen him Craig, ride a motorcycle. Craig does our reg- Craig does arena here at Flow, and he has a large, large. Can a motorcycle support him like aerodynamically? Well, I mean, I feel like a problem, little because you know how. Do you ever see a football player with no shoulder pads and a helmet on? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he has obviously when he rides his motorcycle, no shoulder pads, <laughs> but he has a motorcycle helmet on, and he looks like um, he was going to be in a parade at. Uh, the Mummers, you know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> you didn't. You never saw like uh, what's New Orleans thing? Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras with the big oh, paper mache okay. heads. Gotcha. It's enormous. That's that's. But that I don't, I don't. I don't know if he wrestled sixty one. The the answer to the the kid that beat Logan at Pan Am's last year is uh, uh, Quintana. Quintana. Quintana Lopez. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can put together a there 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 can be Cuba's a very, awesome. Yeah, it oh can be a very gosh. nice card for Cuban. Uh, I don't want to lose. And the draw, bring him on. We're unbeatable in Times Square. And the draw for the Nigerian women is... Adekaroye. De- Adekaroye, who beat... Well, she didn't beat Helen, right? She, she came close. Is she going to be in Helen's weight? That's that's a great match. They should just make it happen. It's have, fluid. They're basically the same. Mm-hmm. Just make the match happen. Well, do you know, there's a... The girl from India came out of nowhere. That's random. It, no, man, what's, what was her story? She came out of nowhere and beat Helen twice. The girl from India? Mm-hmm. The Helen was concussed. Well, didn't she beat her twice? Yes. Uh, the concussions don't go away that quickly. Well, I didn't know that she was concussed both times. You're acting like that was just, like, general knowledge, like she went into, like... I thought it was general knowledge. That was literally the first I heard of that. Okay, well, t- no disrespect to the Indian girl, but Helen Rules was viciously concussed and shouldn't have been wrestling. Now viciously concussed. Well, now, she viciously now your story's changing. Okay. <laughs> so vicious concussion. Hey, but, Hel- okay, Helen's great uh, Olympic champion is the best in the world when she's not concussed. Okay, this is not an attack on Helen Marulis. I'm just saying this girl's really good. And there's not. M- I many, never heard of her before. I bet there's not many people that Helen Marulis loses to concussed. Can we sue the NFL for this? We're working on it. We're Class action. It. Tell the truth. Hey, it's it's Pat Papalizio's birthday. Hey, Pat Papaluzio. Go ahead and sing it, Willie. I don't know where Sion is. Sion should at least come in here and have to tell him happy birthday after butchering his name mm-hmm. and challenging him to a fight in Stillwater at one point. Okay. What's Pico in here for? I don't know. I just, <laughs> just put it in you there. Just put Pico There's in there. There's been a lot of Pico discussion. A lot of people, well. There has? Yeah. People are like, what What would happen? One of the questions is like, what would happen if Pico entered the open right now? What would he do? First of all, he would go 70 mm-hmm. at the smallest. I could see him. Being up at 74 now. He is enormous looking. But I think he'd probably... Well, he's fighting at 45, right? But that's night before. Can you imagine Molinero Pico again? That was like... Yes, please. That was an all-time... That was the most brutal best of three series. I mean, the most physical... Uh, unbelievable. I would love to see Pico back in the mix. Wonder if he... What was he, 19 then? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think so. Their matches at the Feral were also awesome because, like, the Feral, there's no seats. You're just literally next to them. There's just all these people crowded around the mat, and they're, like, getting into it. Oh, man. Well, they wrestled four or five times? That year? Five times, yeah, because they wrestled. I imagine that close. You're just hearing the slaps. Whack. Yes. Whack. That was great. It's insane when you're that close and, and you hear – you can hear the yeah. physicality. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, this would be terrible. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure if Pico was wrestling, he'd be in the mix. Yeah. The finalist at whatever. Could he? Do you think if he's like, all right, I want to make the Olympic team, and he took six months training, could he be in the mix? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is he would have to go 74, right? Mm-hmm. Like 65 day before was like problematic. He cut hard. 65 day of two hour weigh in back to back days. I don't see it. So he'd have to go up. He's probably going to be up. By 2020, he might be like, who knows where he'll be in the MMA world at that point. We have a lot. There's a lot of flux in the middle for America. 61, yeah. 65, 70. I mean, 70, we have James and Molinero, who's established, right? Olympia at 65. But, I mean, 
Logan's moving up. What does Zane do? What does North do? What does uh, did I say Zane? <laughs> Zane. Um, so there's a lot of flux there. Yeah, a lot of flux. I'm, I'm concerned about the uh, post Burroughs world. Who's taking over? I don't want to think about that. He, Why are you gonna put me in a dark place? No, he he'll be forever. He's Jordan's wrestling until Beacons. Yeah. yeah. Beacon's to old enough to take he'll, I, yes. I feel good about Beacon being the replacement. Okay. You feel okay, so LeBron is is, is maybe waiting for his son to get in the NBA. That's, That's right. exactly what I was gonna say. I think Burroughs could do the same thing. He's not gonna hand over seventy four till his son is ready. So Beacon is now four? I'm saying, I'm saying he's four. He's four. So really, I think by 2028, he could make a run because he'd be like 16 then, right? What? Well, it's 10 years, so he'd well, be no. 14. 14. Okay, so we got with 2032 is all Burroughs has to do. <laughs> yeah, I I think he's he got this. It. Yeah, he's got it. So Come just on. just hang on, Jordan. Yeah, I'm concerned, but we don't even have to consider it till 2020. So 2021. 2021, we'll so, start thinking about 74. No matter who knows who you're going to be by 2021, right? If you're so Maybe. concerned, why don't you put on a little weight? Start getting back, yeah. get back in the room. I say be All the right. change you want to see yeah. in the world. Man in the mirror. I've never hit 140, but I think with two years of training, I could probably hit big enough to weight cut down to 163 Listen, on a regular basis. The uh, Dagestan has a mentorship program. Mm -hmm. We'll get you Exchange. rooming. We'll get you rooming with Boltakayev. Okay, you'll be a, you'll be a thick seventy four kilo in no time. Hey, so, so you know how as uh, yesterday as Garov's uh, suspension ended, which is awesome. Boltakayev's is already over. Boltakayev's can <laughs> Boltakayev can wrestle. Listen, his suspension was shorter than any of Godoyev's time away from the mat. It was just voluntary. These Russians, they don't even wrestle, so he could be. I know, right? It's like, oh wow, suspension. Oh, you didn't miss anything game. that you wanted to go to. <laughs> you wouldn't have gone anyways. Yeah. I mean, what a it's joke. so stupid. Those guys are so juiced to the gills, and they get these slap on the wrist. So, I, meanwhile, US, uh, USADA is popping our wrestlers for double mint gum. Yeah. So, hey, with Boltakayev Nomad, um, I, I, I love that he's back. I want to see him melt down again in the worst way. Is he going to be a 97, you think, and, and let uh, Sajalayev go 92? I hope that they stick him in 97 and Bitsayev just – Annihilates him at Russian national. Yeah, he won't. He won't. I don't think he'll make apart. the team either. Who, Boltakaya? No, I don't think he'll make. He it. might be down seventy four though. Now that he's off the <laughs> sauce. Yeah, he had four good months. That's it. Mm -hmm. A couple good months. That's I it. mean, if yeah, if you want to, if you want evidence of steroids that you can't find in their samples because they were swapped out, just look at the facts. Shout out to Grigory. Yeah, Rodchenkov, stay strong, my man. We know you're out there listening. Speaking of... Don't get killed by Putin. Speaking of people from Dagestan that are suspect, Sajalayev suspect now, too. He's talking trash. Hey, I don't th I don't think Sajalayev... I mean, sure, every every Russian, it's kind of like you're 10% like, yeah, he probably, maybe, but I think he's legit. But No, he's legit. I just don't like what he's saying right now. Sajalayev talking greasy, ta saying he's nonsense. Also, Listen. He's also talking, to me, soft. He's, so, a, he's out here making excuses. He said, according to Ivan, if you don't follow, if you like wrestling and you don't follow Sikkim underscore D, Ivan Freestyle Wrestling, I don't know what you're doing. The guy predicts the future routinely. He says exactly. He predicted the Lebedev thing, like before it happened, as it was happening, through the wrestling, all yeah. this stuff. He's awesome. He's, he was at he was at Junior Nationals past weekend. Oh. Like he was on site and... and I was DMing him stuff, and he was helping me out with finding information and stuff. But uh, Great dude. He's a great dude, yeah. So anyways, he tweeted that, that Sajalayev said, the next bout versus Snyder will end in my favor. Okay, which, okay, you can say that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, no problem sure, there. That's a, we're cool. Christian I mean, beat me last show. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to beat him this show. All, all right, right, cool. We'll see. Cool. But then here's what he said. I underestimated him in the final match of Worlds. I started jostle with him and got tired. This is all the more he was 10 kilograms heavier than me. Mm -hmm. That's whining. You're whining, bro. I'm making excuses. You got tired? He got, he's complaining that he got tired in a you wrestling know what? match. I got tired. That's, that's, that's part, part of, the, of the sport. It's part of the thing. They don't, I don't understand what maybe our Russian correspondent Nomad can explain, but why, why are these guys like surprised when they get tired or like that? Why do they like try to diminish? 
they try to take this like moral high ground in wrestling that like you just or sh- you should like just try to win with technique only and that like you shouldn't even want to be strong even though they're the ones that are taking steroids for some odd reason why is this like their mentality nomad they for for years i took the tack that like conditioning doesn't matter because the russians don't condition and it's it's painfully obvious that they don't condition and we'll just try they'll just try to outscore you which is a pretty sound it's like i can i can go six minutes but yeah i don't they, they're just anti they're like what conditioning that's stupid well they literally lost the world championship because sajalayev was i mean he, he melted late yeah he didn't yeah. have anything left and I, I think they're slowly they're either learning or just being like nah this or, or it's i mean it's gonna be awesome for us if they continue to not condition because same day weigh-ins conditioning will be even more important it was you know me and nomad were talking about um the other day I don't, it was not on a show or anything. I think we're just shooting a breeze. And we're talking about the difference in these two-day weigh-ins now mm-hmm. that it might affect a lot of people's – you would think it would help their conditioning and stamina, but it might have an adverse effect on that because part of it is – part of making weight and cutting down – it's, there's some good aspects of it in the stamina category. You have to run. You have to do more cardio. Um, you think about a guy like Chimizo, mm-hmm. where it's not as difficult to make weight, it might affect his stamina. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. Uh, have we ever seen Chimizo get tired? I'm not saying Chimizo. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, just an example. Just an example. Yeah, per- I mean, Godoyev, Godoyev in the world champion or the Rio too. He gassed bad. That cost him. It was conditioning. Well, I don't know if it was conditioning or well, wait, but that's like contrary to your point. I thought you were saying. No, I mean, that, I'm, I'm that was, saying I'm not. That's I'm going back to the Russians gas thing, not the two day way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're that vascular, that jacked and ripped, it's like it's just more. More oxygen is required than, than well, that, the average man. That's also, what Nomad he, said, too. Also, he was bleeding like crazy. Oh, that's what Nomad said, too, um, was that when they these guys move up and they carry around more weight, not only – I said they do less cardio because they don't have to make weight. He said they're carrying more weight that their body's not used to providing oxygen for. Look at – and David Taylor could have won. He, he they, said this, though. David Taylor has literally said just that, that yep. basically like – um, do you remember that Nomad? Yep, that's that's what, what kind of where I got it from was like David was only made me realize like, oh yeah, this makes total sense actually. Yeah, well, okay, it's funny that you bring up David Taylor saying that. I was think I was talking about a guy he wrestled. If you remember, yes, Danny Chirati. When he wrestled, yes, Danny Chirati. I think it might have been Chirati's first time up at eighty six, and he gassed. He gassed really bad, and there, there's an example of moving up a weight and gassing whether it's because you don't have to do the cardio that you used to to cut hard or you're carrying more mass yeah mass a lot of mass so Sajalayev making excuses I expected better from the former pound for pound number one he held on to that from Rio to Worlds so congrats go Kyle Snyder Frank Chimizo he should be careful the things he says about Jordan Burroughs, in my opinion. He called him Queen on Instagram. I I do not recommend this. You don't do that. I, I don't think I don't see this paying off for him in the long run. But what I've loved is like these two have been going back and forth on Instagram for since the Meredith Gross Gross match. So very excited for that. Any thoughts? Any feel free. Four mics. No, I don't I've known Chimizo to be a pretty good sport, mm-hmm. pretty good egg. Maybe he's just trying to sell it. I don't know. It comes off, it comes off out of character and from what I know. Um, so maybe he's trying to sell it. Maybe he is just a – maybe he's sincere, though. Perhaps so. Uh, you want to get into a little U.S. Open discussion? I Does can't wait. I cannot wait to get to, to U.S. Open stuff. Two thumbs all the way up, people. Let's do US it. U.S. Open. <laughs> We've Let's got, freaking do Nomad this. Nomad is going to shake so many officials' hands. Can we get that? We need to get that on camera this do we time. Have, we don't have a clip of that? No, he just did it. How How are we supposed to know? We just look over and we're like, where's Nomad? Like a concerned parent has lost yes. their child. We're like, where's Nomad? And we look over and he's shaking the row of 30 officials' hands. 
all of them because he is so excited for the finals to start. He's like a like politician. Nomad. Yeah. What are you? you so, sometimes I don't know if <laughs> Nomad. Like, <laughs> I think Nomad thinks he's like Rich Bender. Sometimes he's like, <laughs> eh, let me and let me go let me go uh, fire up the troops here. It's like, and nomad. who among us in this room has the best relationship with the officials? Congrats. <laughs> I would say I'm a Mike man Mal. of the people. Huh? I'm a man of the people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Congrats, man. Good job, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's talk about wrestling. Let's do it. Fifty-seven, uh, a new addition. He won NCAA's. His name's Darian Cruz. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in seeing Cruz. It may not. We may. It may not truly reveal itself now at this point. But with a year of training, what can he become with a full freestyle focus? Got to figure Buxton's going to be involved there, which is good. But before. Before he registered, I was wondering if he was going to register. Right. So I DM'd him, and I'm like, hey, you wrestling at the Open? He's like, yep, got to get back on that horse. I'm like, you just wrestled like two weeks ago. Back on the horse? <laughs> yeah. NCAAs was an hour he, ago. These guys take two weeks off, and they're like, man, I've been slacking. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, good to see him in the mix. Um, so looking like Ramos Fix, Cruz Pirelli, Nomad's favorite, Nathan Tomasello, then Zane Richards, who – Zane Richards never went 57, to my knowledge. They changed it to day of weigh-ins. He's like, sign me up. <laughs> Get me down there. That yeah. makes someone explain that to me. He did not He did not look terribly sucked out at uh, the Schultz. Can like, you explain what about making it day of weigh-ins compelled him to do this? I got to look something up. He, he, like a lot of people, he's like, all right, well. They're all thinking about they're all thinking about the Olympics. They're all thinking about the Olympics. And he's like, "All right, well, I'm not that tall. Might as well transform my body now. Get my body used to it. I don't know if it's going to work out for him. I hope it does. Zane Richards is exciting to watch. Yeah, so. I've always liked Zane Richards. That's like, been I've, that's been will no. Do not. What? Don't you try to act like you love Zane Richards like I love Zane Richards. I've you're, always you're liked a hater. Him. I've always liked him in freestyle more. That's what I was going to say. He talked all that crap about Corey Clark. Whoops. That was hilarious. I loved it. That's yeah, what, it was great. Yeah, that's why I love Zane Richards. Yeah, he's awesome. Zane Richards is one of the more, most interesting guys to listen to interviews of. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's an interview king. Um, he what did not, he say about him? He said he's not on my level. Not on my it level. should never be close. <laughs> after he beat him in overtime. He had like a <laughs> hands down slide by. And then I don't think he beat him again after that. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they, they almost fought like basically every time they wrestled. But, and he's with he's with Brian Medlin at Illinois, who I really like. And they, they got to go to Russia, so... I don't know. I mean, obviously you think, you know, Dayton, Nato, uh, Ramos and all, but Zane Richards is not going to be a fun out. He wrestled, Zane wrestled 125 pounds in the 2011 state tournament. Here we are seven years <laughs> later. He's like, I'm I bet, did he win that state tournament? Yes, he did. There you go. <laughs> He's like, that's my weight. Happy to be there. So I, th I think we're all in our minds kind of penciling in Dayton and Ramos here. But I see a lot of landmines for those guys. Is anyone else, if if you had, um, if you had to make your choice right now, picking outside of Ramos Fix to be the final? No. Well, before we get there, let's talk about this. How close to the rankings do you think seeds will be? Very, very, very. Right. So that means, that means Tony. Uh oh. Tony will be up top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. To get to the finals, he'll probably have to get the winner of Pirelli and um, Darian. But down below is going to be NATO crazy fix. because it's going to be NATO and Fix, right? And so they're going to have to beat. I like those matchups for Dayton, though. I mean, he's already beaten Tomasello. Uh, is he going to have to go through? Uh, I, I can see someone like Zane being a little difficult. But the problem is, the pro it's not a problem, but... The thing is that you have to consider with Dayton is he doesn't need but one takedown to end the match or just get up 6-0 with mm -hmm. his trap. Uh, I, I think he's going to look great, great at this weight, and that's my pick for the finals. Nathan Tomasello, he lost to him already. Now, if Nato was up top with Tony, that was a crazy match. Pirelli gave – didn't – Pirelli, like, had Ramos beat too at the Open last year. Yeah, Ramos and Nato, he blew both those matches in the final 10, 15 seconds. The Nato one was all time because he gave up a takedown oh. and a gut. 
That was Pirelli? absurd. With match. like, that's when I, ten seconds left. Yeah. Who said? Was it Tony? That's Gilman. Gilman said he likes it, to lose matches. I know, I know he likes to blow matches. He's like, I don't mean that disrespectfully. He's like, he just had these guys beat. He did. He did. But you can count on him making it interesting. So I think I think the matchups are 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 compelling. I think on paper it's those two, but the difference is marginal. It's def it's definitely there for for someone to disrupt it. But that match, and we know we have to get pretty U.S. Open heavy today and Tuesday, because Thursday we're gonna be up in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So we're only gonna get to do this a couple times. So I think we need to dive into the matchup. Tony Ramos versus Dayton Fix, maybe one of the most anticipated bouts of the whole thing. We've never seen this match. I don't even know if there's been an OTC competition. When when Dayton beat Tomasello, was that was that a best of three? Yeah, he beat him twice. I only watched one of them. Um, but so, you know, you beat somebody twice. It's not flukish, right? It's not. So. Right, but we're talking about. Ramos fix. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying about coming through that side of the bracket or that that other side of the bracket. Tony has Tony has a favorable favorable thing up there. I know, I, but I said let's talk about that matchup. Let's talk about right. Ramos versus Fix. Let's right. I'm talking about I don't know why it's a foregone conclusion. Okay, we spent 10 minutes talking that it's not a foregone conclusion. We, we, yeah, I know. But I'm saying let's talk about that matchup. Where I asked, is anyone picking against that being the finals matchup at this point? Okay. Not a hand was raised. So I said, can we? All right. All right. Got it. All right. All right. Never mind. We'll move on. Well, I mean, no. Talk about the. I'm trying to. All right, go. You're going back. I'm, I think that it's going to be tough for. I mean, there's not a strong track record. Apart from Dan Dennis, how often have we seen Tony Ramos get turned? It's been pretty rare, right? Mm -hmm. Very rare. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a Dayton Fix type of turn that Dan Dennis got him with. It was a rib destroying gut wrench from Dennis. Now I, I think getting through the head hands of Tony is gonna be really tough. I were I think Tony can control center against Dayton. Dayton I I could see playing from a little bit of distance, going on the clock. Tony's got to keep this. This is a 2-1 win for Tony. That's oh, how he's got to do it. He's got to yeah. get to a leg once, get a step out, put him on the shot clock. And we talked last show about Dayton's not incredibly diverse with leg attacks, um, and Tony's so sound defensively, right? Right. Anything over there? I think... Dayton should just keep shooting forever and not give Ramos a chance to work his way back into the match through his own points. I know his re is really good. That's what I was going to say. But, like, just kill time. Like, get on, get, take the lead on the shot clock, try to get a step out or takedown, and shoot to kill clock. I mean, shoot to score also. But, like, take a shot 20 seconds. Take a shot 15, 20 seconds, right? And all of a sudden... Give Ramos as little time as possible because he's the kid who's like, well, there's time on the clock. I can still win the match. Yeah. Yes. You know, Tony, in all the time I watch him, I always feel like he feels <clears throat> just comfortable. Like there's still time on the clock. I'm not going to go crazy in the first period, and you know. Um, and I think sometimes that bites him. Yeah. I. Well, I don't know. Not in America. I don't – I think – when does that bit him? He's only been blown – I mean – Domestically, what are, what are his losses domestically? Well, maybe not domestically. Well, um, this is I domestic. mean, do, do you want to do you want to rely on that? Like that Joe Cologne match, he didn't do much till the end, right? Uh, do you want to rely on that? Like, I I remember internationally too, there being a couple matches that he could have won. I don't. He needed a takedown late and didn't get it, and it was the only time he really went was with a minute to go. Well, I don't think there's anyone in America that's. Because I assume we're talking about Rahimi matches, and I don't think there's anybody in America on Rahimi's level right now outside of, you no, could I'm argue, Gilman. No, I'm not exclusively about Rahimi. There's been other international matches. Oh, what was... Mm. He had yeah, a, there's one that now I'm trying to think of who he's wrestling that really... In 2014, he had a world's match that was pretty close um, where he almost... Uh, that was against Erdinibot. 
Yeah, or didn't buy it. Right. He was right there. I mean, and there's no one even close to his level in America either. But so most of Tony's losses, though, are to very legitimate. I mean, Bon, Aliyev, or didn't buy it. Rahimi, Gilman ended up with World Silver. Like, yeah. Basically, only loses to elite guys. And the Gilman one, that was a very, those were both high scoring affairs. That does not suit, that's not his style. He's he's going to look to win control. Look how he beat Hayes. Look at how he beat. Ramos and NATO it's it's controlling every aspect of the match and um, kind of being unflappable so I think if you see this after the first period if it's like a 2-1 2-0 thing or 1-0 Ramos that's right where he wants it to be my question Mm is uh, can Dayton get his slide by against Tony Um, because that I think there's potential there if he gets his hands on Dayton pressure him forward is that going to set him up? Of course, Tony, you know, have we ever seen him give up a slide by? Maybe Logan. Um, but beyond that, not not too often. Is there some old man strength in play here? Because Tony's like, what, 26, 27? Dayton's 19? <clears throat> Potentially, Any yeah. Any that? For sure. I mean, they they say Tony's unreal strong. Um, so yeah, I th- that's definitely a potential. There's Big Brother. There's just being in that moment. But the thing is, Dayton has been in so many big matches in his career. It's like you kind of throw age out a little bit with him because man, this won't be the the U.S. Open final won't be the biggest match that Dayton fixes wrestled. No, I don't. And think, it won't be the best guy he's wrestled I don't probably think the either. Stage. I don't think the stage will. It, it's going to be decided on wrestling, mm-hmm. right? Okay, great potential match there. Sixty one. Pick a name out of a hat, although I do think that Cologne and Brewer are a little removed from the field. It's utterly dynamic, this this weight. I mean, you have a hard time picking picking this right. This, I mean, this bracket could go in any number of ways. All right? Tyler Graff makes the finals of everything. Uh, crew, um, Cologne has been the best performer lately right mm-hmm. um but but they're all there's so much parody is what i'm saying yeah i agree i think even though brewer and cologne are are separated you know if a if a gross came out yeah made a final yeah i mean you can say who's wrestling best lately you can also say um the defense and this is the worst defensive weight we have <laughs> yeah these guys hemorrhage points yeah cody brewer Best offensive wrestler in the weight. Maybe the, that guy always in these 13, 12 amazing matches. Nashawn Garrett gives up a lot of points. Graf tougher to score on. I think Corey Clark's going to. Corey Clark's reverse lift is unbelievable. Well, yeah. The The problem in picking a match here is like you can say that this guy's. This guy's wrestling the best right now. This guy might be, you know, you could say he is the best. He is the best of this group. But you have to to navigate that whole road. You're gonna, you're. It's gonna be 14, 13 in the quarters, 12, 10 in the semis. I mean, how do you pick those? They're just wild. Yeah, you know what this weight is missing, guys. Daniel DeShazer. Oh, he might, he might be there. He needs to be there. Yeah. He's not registered. Let's pay his entry fee. We need the slap back in Vegas. Because, you know, what, no matter what happens, you know it's going to be interesting. It will be slap tech. He open hand slapped a man one year ago, and no repercussions whatsoever. Well, then he, I think he, they did hit him fought, with a caution uh, in two. Then he tried to fight Dardane. He remember? only fought. What? He Who fought he s- Brewer. He slapped uh, Brewer. Brewer, okay. Yeah, I was thinking he, of the Dardane He point. slapped Brewer, and then he no. tried. No. Did he? Yes. yes, he slapped Brewer Later 100%, the and then Brewer pointed the scoreboard. Yeah. You don't remember this? Sir? Well, no, I think he slapped Dardanes. Oh, he slapped Brewer. No, he slapped Brewer. <laughs> Brewer Brewer dropped and then got up and pointed at the scoreboard. I was like, what do you do? What are you doing? You just slap me He's off like, the match. I like, just text you. Yeah. yeah. I remember. So I thought DeShazer just like smacked and like Dardanes like took a second gathering himself and then just like well, that went happened, at him. But it was like a cl- it was more like a club than a slap. Okay. Like, like and open hand slap Cody Brewer. Dardanes so disrespectful. Went, yeah. He went full like, After oh, we're doing this? Yeah, and then Dardane's like, took a second. 
started swinging on him, and he didn't want it. And then Bobby Telford came out and picked them both up, like he's like, the father of yeah. two like little children. Like it was a three-year-old in Kmart. Gilman Get over here, yeah. Bobby Gilman Telford. Almost that. doesn't fit in Las Vegas. It was, it was a wild scene. <laughs> yes. What about Brandon Wright? Yeah, I, Brandon Wright made the finals he 61, last year. He is big. Yes, I was told he's going 61. Which oh my gosh, thoughts and prayers. Yeah, he made the finals last year. He beat he beat Cologne last year. I know year that. It's just the bigness. Yeah, it's more the bigness, Snowman. And then if Kendrick Maple's involved, no, that I, can't happen. I know. I I think that too. But until this it is happens, the most hilarious weight we have. Okay, I I can't wait for it. We're just gonna look back. We're gonna do an article. After day one, and there's going to be more like 10 to 12 matches in, in this yeah. than any other way. I mean, the thing I is, know. it was like that last year, too. I know. It's just going to be worse, though. I don't know how you pick it. I can't call it. 65, Steber McKenna, Ironman, Heil Ward, Nick Dardanes, Darius Little. I, I think this feels like Steber McKenna. So do I. I don't know. How, do, how will the – I don't think Joey's – is Joey ranked? I don't know where Joey will be in the bracket. Joey Ward, for those of you not on a first name basis. Um, talk to McKenna. Oh, McKenna. Okay. Well, McKenna's oh, yeah. ranked fourth. We're ra- McKenna's four. Okay, so and if we're saying Zane and Zane's BJ aren't going to be Stevers there. Stevers in, Futrell out. So Logan and Logan and McKenna. What's Futrell doing? He had uh, list Frank surgery. Oh. Yeah. No man. And he's already qualified. So. Dr. James Andrews, a.k.a. Wrestling Nomad, he's got the, the Helen concussion scoop, <laughs> the Liz Frank. All right. Speaking of Frank, this weight, uh, 65, not – I mean, I'm excited to watch Ironman, but this weight is not really doing it for me. Deacon probably out, Yanni out. So it will probably be McKenna and Henderson as a 2-3 seeds, Henderson who just won Farrell. Henderson been a, a, an interesting one. I didn't expect to have a – Successful freestyle. Yeah, I mean, he's been good. Leave it to I don't know. You watch his, you watch him wrestle, and then you say, ah, I don't think he's his game translates to freestyle. And then he's good. He's How good about this? Now. Evan Evan Henderson gets to Madison, right? And like the day he signed his lease, he found out uh, Barry Davis got fired. So then it's like, all right, well, I guess I gotta go prove myself, and then goes to goes to the sh- the uh, Farrell and wins. Dang. Yeah, that's legit. I didn't. I did not know he was at Wisconsin. Yeah, to be honest with you. I is he was still is Rochelle Bruce wrestling? Creek. Who? Kyle Rochelle. Um, I don't know. We he, cannot have another Pan Am situation on our hands. He's good though. I know. He looked excellent at the the Farrell Mice's first match. So I think it was a little tough cut, but he's also trying to continue his coaching career. So, well, can we get an update there? Where's he gonna land? I don't know. I was talking to him. Sounds like he's got. Got some options. I think he's a pretty good coach. I mean, if you look at what he did with Evan Wick <laughs> this year. He's a great coach. Yeah. South Dakota State. That would be that would be interesting. He's from Kentucky. Could he go with Angel Kentucky. in Indiana? Remember when uh the right remember across when the right I had across a problem the with him wrestling at Pan Am's? Now I have a problem. Now I have a problem with him not wrestling at the open. Yeah. I want him to wrestle at the open. Inner Kyle. Did you guys become best friends? Well, he led your fantasy team to what, third place? Second. Congrats, dude. Nope, no, nope, no, no, no. Third? The cou- no. the couch yeah. right this is yeah. one two right here. <laughs> one, two. Wow. All right, third. You were top three in this room though. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. <laughs> Congrats. Uh oh, man, I want him to wrestle. Seventy um, we So sixty five's not I mean Zane, right? Zane. No, not Zane. I mean Logan. Yeah. Logan. Yeah. Hopefully we find out later. You you don't you don't find out much about Penn State like ever. Um you just kinda Guess, but we'll find out. Yeah, we don't know the status of Zane. We don't know the status of Nolf, really. Molinero looks like the guy. I thought Tommy Gant was entered at 74. I didn't see him, but Molinero, Hunter Steber, Jason Chamberlain, Matt Klozik. Those are the 70-kilogram guys of note. It's not that exciting. It's not that exciting. 74, uh, Imar, that's exciting. Evan Wick's exciting. Uh, Nazar Kolchitsky and Dan Valamont. So, man. What did Gant won the Farrell at 74? 74, yeah. But um, he's not registered, and I thought he was. Well, there are no Wolfpack guys registered, which okay. I, I find I, ex- I blame Melissa Simmons. Yeah. yeah Shots fired. No, but I find that extremely hard to believe that there's going to be no Wolfpack guys there. 
Especially they just signed a couple. Like, come on. They're going to be in the open. Look what does this. it have to do with them signing people? I'm just saying, they have a very large stable in their RTC to think that none of them are going. Oh, oh. oh in their RTC. I thought you meant, yeah, they signed a recruit, so they've got to show That's up at the open now. No, I'm saying they're, they're, they have a very large RTC, and of They'll course most there. of them will be there. Signed Jacob Casper. Yeah. Oh. That's right. Um, I don't know. For me, uh, there, you know, there's other guys here. There's, 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 there's Gant. Evan Wick just registered. Um, but to me, that the money matches Nazer versus Imar. Yes. Any history there, Wrestling Nomad? I don't believe so because they didn't hit at Farrell the two years ago. Yeah, and Nazar was at 70 for last year's trials and open and whatnot. And Imar was obviously at 74. But they were at that weight at Farrell, remember? Yes. And Last time he was down at 70. Imar lost to Jimmy Kennedy and then did not wrestle back. Mm. Got it. 79, Dake Ringer, Nate Jackson, Evans, and Asper are registered. But we know Zahid's coming. So that's huge. Omar coming. Omar. Mark Hall, maybe? I don't know. More Penn State just yeah. questions. I don't know. I don't know. I asked Penn State Pat. He ain't hit me back yet. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he hooks it up. He ain't Let hit me back know. yet. Looking Zahid, like Dake Ringer though. Zahid Ringer could be fun. Oh, absolutely. Like very fun. Especially, and I mean, if Mark doesn't go, then they got to do Zahid at three. Well, maybe they don't because he doesn't have any senior level. I don't know between NCAA and Junior World Silver. Oh, I know. I think he should, I think he's clear three seed. So if Mark. If Mark Hall is there, then it's Daringer Hall. They can't have Dake and Zahid on the same side. That would be criminal. It'd be really, really. That's what it. That's what it would be if it went by seeds. If I mean, if the seeds went by rankings. One more time. If the seeds went by rankings, it would be, it would be Dake, Zahid, and Ringer Hall. Oh, okay. Why? Because Hall's ahead of. Hall's Hall's okay. ranked fourth. Zed's ranked. All right, it's fifth. not criminal. It's no longer a crime. How good do you think in that field? How good do you think Matt Brown could do? Why do I? I talking Wh- where's where? Are, all right, more Penn State questions. Where's Matt Brown? Where's Morgan McIntosh? What have you done where with these guys? Where is Morgan McIntosh? What happened? We need Morgan McIntosh. When he graduated, you're like, you know who who could be a factor at 86? Morgan McIntosh. This was Penn State people tell me this. I'm like, yeah, for sure. He's awesome. He's beaten Kyle Snyder. He's beaten all these really good. Jaden Cox. Okay, I'm all in. Morgan, where is he? Where is he? He could be a factor at 86, 92. I bet he was. Yeah. Is he rock climbing? I bet. Where's he at? Matt I Brown? Is at. I, I don't know why I have this thing. Like, I feel like I feel like Matt Brown could do well here. Like, he, I feel like he could beat guys that we wouldn't think he would beat. Um, uh, maybe I'm a little too high on him, but I don't know. I feel less confident about Matt Brown. For, same here. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I saw him get teched by John Reeder in like a minute. I, what, what, John Reeder doesn't count. I know. You said that. I'm to just me. saying. You if said you that got- to me the other day. One well, number one, John Reeder is really good. Number two, I've seen a lot of good wrestlers get teched really quick by other good wrestlers. Graf tech style. Graf like, tech Dennis 10-0, and then I- Dennis beat him like four one. I'm just time. saying. I mean, what what le- what are we talking here for for Matt Brown? Like fifth? Just world champion? No, just I'm kidding. not saying that. Behind Ringer, Dake, Mark, and Zahid. I'm saying he that could beat one of those guys. If you think I do not think he could beat one I'm, of those I'm guys. I'm saying that if I do not consider Matt Brown, Zahid, Matt Brown, Mark to be a foregone conclusion. That's what I'm saying. And I feel like you are. Yes. That yeah, is I think I am too. Yeah. But but Morgan. Morgan's not is Morgan center. retired? I just need closure. Penn State fans, just give me closure here. Let me know. Is it over? I'll stop thinking he can make a splash if it's all over and done with. 86, Pat Downey. He's back at it. He's ramping up for Vegas, guys. He's calling out Gabe Dean, who's, like, retired. Did did Miles Martin register? I'm, I don't know, but shout out to Greg Martin, who's now on Twitter. He's Why is Pat Downey right even? Now. Yeah, Pat. Well, Austin Coburn's registered twice. Mm. The, Co- the Coburn twins. The Coburn twins are registered. 
Uh, why? Yeah, Greg Greg Martin is on Twitter, and that's just going to be awesome, wonderful. Um, but why is Pat, I don't understand Pat Downey calling out Gabe Dean? Gabe Dean's not wrestling. He's just anxious. He just he just wants to wrestle. He's going down memory lane. He just saw Gabe tweet, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I beat him one time. Like I'm gonna call him out again." Yeah. Um. So four of the top five are registered: Taylor, Perry, Brooks, Downey. So. Sammy Brooks. Yeah. So that's a pretty um. We're getting cream of the crop there at this weight. Okay. Sammy Brooks, Sammy Brooks is, is not, not registered. registered. He's not registered. Nope. No. Why did I think he was registered? I think people disappear from that list. I'll be honest with you. I, it, it, they end up in the upside down. It's it's. Re- I re- do you I, think Tommy Gant was registered? I could have sworn I read Tommy Gant's name. I think you guys are crazy. Maybe it's possible. Ninety two. Um, I really want to get to ninety seven. So let's just hurry through this. Jaden Cox, that's the guy. And then you've got here's an interesting nugget. Danny Chade and Cody Walters are in the same weight. That's a 97-pounder and a 74 uniting in wrestling. And then Duran Wynn, Kenny Quartz. But 97, this is the Goat Slayer weight. The, all these guys do are beat Goats. Yeah. Okay, Burak beat Snyder. Blaze Cobble beat Kadisov. Gadsen beat Snyder. Ty Walls, the Coon Slayer. Just legends. Just mm-hmm. These guys, all they do is beat legends. Now they'll face each other. No legends in this bracket, but I guess you say is Gadsden the guy here? Is that the one you're penciling in? I mean, that's that's Gadsden the name, Walls. right? That's the name, but he just got beat. Who did he get beat by? He got beat by somebody, or was that the uh, was that the, at Schultz? Who are you speaking of? Kevin Gadsden. <laughs> Kevin, uh, no. Yep. No. Kevin got beat somewhere okay. by somebody not great. That's good. Good stuff, guys. Um, Give me yeah. Ty Walls. Yeah, I I kind of I really like Ty's upside. He's big, but I I no, I've got Kevin here. He won this weight last year at the Open. He's my pick for sure. But then the biggest weight: Adam Kuhn, Gable Stevenson, Don Bradley. Shut it down. I'm curious where they're going to seed Gable. They need to rig it so I mean, that he's these, opposite Kuhn. They have him ranked sixth, senior level. Hmm. All right. Uh, run down that list. Okay, Gwiz not one, so not in. Don Bradley will be one. the one seed. Okay. Is Nelson registered? No. Zach Wright is going, so he'll be the he's two registered. seed. None of the Minnesota guys going to register until Tuesday. So... so. <laughs> Why do you know that? Why do you know? Because I talked to them last night. Because I'm like, I want to start getting my previews in order. Mm. So is Tony Nelson going? I didn't get word on Tony Nelson. Oh, you got the registration date, but not the. Not what is a lot of question marks? I don't right. know. They want to spend money on plane tickets, I guess. I guess so. Okay, so is Telford going? I did not speak to Iowa. I spoke to Minnesota. What do you I'm mean? I'm talking to the whole room. Efren, do I you think. Know if tel- is Efren, Efren, go? Efren Telford's in. Our producer says <laughs> Telford's going. All right, so I don't know. I don't know who's going. All I, I know that Bradley is going to be there and Zach Ray is going to be there. They would be the one, two. Stevenson. Can Gable win this? Can he beat Adam Kuhn? I, I don't. Adam Kuhn? Adam Kuhn is not ranked, by the way. Well, I think that will be remedied. Okay. Gable, so. Stevenson, Adam Kuhn. I think Don Bradley might be the toughest matchup of all of them for, for Gable. I could see I could see Gable just being so much faster than than Kuhn. Maybe he get, ends up on a couple high crotches a la Man, Ty Walls. I don't know what we're gonna see. I we that's the, it's the great mystery. I don't know what we're gonna see. I I would say as good as Gable is, no, he's not gonna win. I think you're probably right. Dom Bradley, like I talk all the time about Gable's feet. Dom Bradley yeah. has excellent feet, yeah, and, and he's bigger, bigger and is more experienced. And is thirty. He's not thirty. He got. He's got kids. He's trying to. He's trying to make money for himself, <laughs> right? <laughs> never, never dismiss the child factor. What? So pencil it in. Nate Jackson's win. <laughs> Nate, Nate Jackson, Jackson comes and unleashes. You know what? On Vegas, don't Nate be surprised. Nate Jackson got like seven kids, dude. 
No, he doesn't. He has a couple. Yeah, a also, couple. he's going 79. He's going to be enormous. Hey, we should. Yeah, the best fathers in wrestling. Because you got Nate Jackson, Tommy Gantz, Ben Haven. He had Bo a kid. Bo Joe. Bo? Bo Jordan? Yeah, but he won't wrestle freestyle. Yeah. yeah, look, Tommy Gantz got kids, right? Look, up 74. Starts Chance. winning tournaments, cash I checks. Kid Chance. Not. Jordan Burroughs. Oh, I kid you not. The kid that won the state bracket my senior year, he took his baby on the podium. <laughs> I, I, I ain't even shitting you. <laughs> you lost oh. to a, you oh. lost to a fight. Hey, just Come chill on, out, bro. Yeah. Come on, there's kids. There's kids. On YouTube, PA man. people, you know. You know that there was a father. You lost, you lost to a father of two. Okay, let's get to some questions. <sighs> what about my junior year? Anyway, I this is I cannot believe this is a thing. When I found out this was on Deadspin, I was like, what? Who cares? I know. Thoughts on media clearances. Heard a national radio commentator complain about USA Wrestling mandating clearances for members of the media. Would like to hear the take of Willie and Flow Wrestling on the topic. I have an opinion. Would love your thoughts on actual. I I cannot believe this is a thing. It's like, first of all, we've all done it. Everyone in this room. I think even Nomad, did you finish it? Yep, all completed. Got, uh, <laughs> That's got my certificates I, I, We have and to everything. see your certificate. Yeah, because print it out. Listen, I have it. All right, I believe. Let's not get go down that rabbit hole. Let's first I'm explain. About after the show, we need to see that. We should need verification for yeah. sure. So what happens? USA Wrestling wants anyone who's going to be on the floor, coaches, um, around children, I'm sure officials, etc., to complete a background check, which took max five minutes. Uh, and the background check, I think, might have took about ninety seconds. Okay. You filled in your biographical information. Yes. B basically, everything that you already know, you just put that in. So that takes no time. So the background check is like, what? who even cares? Then you had to take a course that is just about how to report sexual abuse, bullying, et cetera, et cetera. It's more edu – it was actually somewhat educational, it like was, knowing the process. It was a little educational. Mostly, though, it was, it was boring. But yeah. I still don't mind it, right? It's, it's not a big deal to have to – do it. I cannot believe there's people like like. Here's the thing, media people just like to get triggered about stuff. They they tweet complaints about like the hospitality room, the big J's. Like they complain about a lot of stuff yeah. and like meeting deadlines and like all this other nonsense stuff that us as not actual journalists um don't have to deal with. So they 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 they, they tend to look for things to complain about. And I guess this was the next thing. It doesn't raise the level to me. I don't understand the complaints. I don't understand it is, it either. It isn't, okay, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't something I was like jumping for joy I had to do, but yeah. it's like, okay, I get to be on I mean, the floor around people. All right. There, it's not It's not a contradiction for me to say I don't find have any problem with it. I think it's a good thing. And also for me to say, oh, man, I got to do this. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. It's, it was not just like, it's not something you want to like, do, right? right? You don't want to go to your yearly doctor checkup either, right? But uh, I, d I just don't. I haven't been to the doctor since high school. Right. It's not something you want, like, you're looking forward to doing. Good. But it's not It's not something to, like, this is unacceptable. This is an invasion is this of my the, privacy. Is this uh, the hill media people want to die on? Is this the thing that you're fighting? That's, yeah. that's the story you want to write? I can't. This that's is unacceptable. The, why, do gotta, we, why do we have to do this? I'll tell you why we have to do it. Because there's creepers in the world, and there's there's predators, and we've seen it. Um, you know, look at the gymnastics situation. L there's, I don't have to tell you what specific situations. You know where they're at. I pulled up the other day the sexual predator, <laughs> registered sex offenders in my area. We lives want, at ground zero. Dude. There's there's a lot of sexual predators out I, there. Listen, I could have I could have told you that if you just asked me. Do you think there are a lot of predators in my neighborhood? Well, I live in the hood. He, you live in the hood of the hood. Yeah, but the I live, armpit of the hood. Like if if that if that map was pot dealers, I'd have been like, yeah, yep. The map was sexual predators. I'm like, what? These this is crazy. I didn't know. You know. Anyway, so why not be safe safer than sorry around children? Why not be um, uh, you know, some of the things I actually learned in that video, in those video series. Yeah. I'm mean, like, okay, that's that's cool. That's, uh, I'd be vigilant about stuff. What's the harm in that? Yeah. What's the harm? What's the big deal? Um, babies. Stop being babies is my um, my I, thought. I all think a lot of Big J's must have uh, criminal pasts wow. that you're not mm. privy to because they're like, we don't want to do a background check. Why? Okay. 
Why not? Then yeah. don't cover. Then okay. don't cover the U.S. Open. Then don't cover the, Final X. That's the other thing. They're they're like we're gonna boycott this. Where was you, you at? Where you, you been? Where was you at? Ways. Yeah. Yeah. None of y'all. Yeah. Exactly. Who is? I would like to. Kyle Martin asked this question. Kyle, who is the national radio commentator? I don't think we've seen him at the World Team Trials before. I'd love to know who that was. F O H. Um, F O H says Kyle. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, some of these. I mean, look, Deadspin ran an article. Deadspin. That's the, the most Washington Deadspin Post. article there they could ever write. Well, dead, uh, they like, just. That's part of the. I know you guys get on me Deadspin about. Is dead. Uh, like when I criticize Barstool and I criticize Deadspin and stuff, it's like they like to complain about stuff. They like to clown on things, and like I just don't get that. But um, for Deadspin to um, really I mean, doesn't it gets, get people clowning on. No, things. I don't. I get people clowning on. To me, it just gets old. It's like their whole deal. Like Deadspin only writes these cheeky articles. Like uh, Barstool, to me, I, I, most of the stuff I see is just clowning on people. To me, it gets old. But um, what I don't get about Deadspin writing it is. Who at Deadspin is a reporter around youth as- athletes? So you don't have to worry about it. So don't yeah. worry about it. You don't have to do it. Th- it that's, the, that's my whole point. They just I wanted mean, something to be upset about. Right. If you're, if you're, um, I promise you, if you're following, ma- you know, if you're writing on Major League Baseball or oh. NHL hockey or uh, anything, you are no, not so around youth children. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Shut up. You don't have to do it. Yeah. Quiet your mouth. <clears throat> Uh, a couple more questions before we depart. Can we have a nomad breakdown of Chimizo versus Burroughs? Spelled wrong. This guy spelled Burroughs wrong. I should not have read it. Then check back to see how close the freestyle guru was in his prediction. I was pretty close on Snyder said July of. Okay. To the actual outcome of the match. This guy sounds like he's being sarcastic. You also picked. Yeah, I think he is being <laughs> sarcastic. I picked Snyder. Yeah, yeah, but you also picked Dake to beat. Burrows, so you're not you're not bad. That's because a that is bullcrap. Because for months and years, I said Kyle Dake will never beat Jordan Burrows, and then I kept asking, "Is like, why are you so excited for this match? Like, he's never going to beat him." And you all got in my head, and finally, I was like, "All right, bleep it, I'm going to do it." And then we come around, it's like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to pick Jordan Burrows." So you got hit. You guys suck. You, uh, Chris, yes. Christian Jedi mind tricked you. Yes, exactly. I was <laughs> really pissed about that's it. That's why you're going to say I, was I got really that pissed pick about it because you guys tricked me. I'm never picking. I'm never then, picking. Him and Burroughs had a drink together in Vegas, and Burroughs tweeted out a picture of Nomad. I know. That yeah, was that was Jordan Burroughs. That was him <laughs> taking very understanding that gentleman. Was like biggest moment ever. For Lauren Nomad. gave me more crap than Jordan did. Good. Classic. Classic wrestling. I don't like. Wrestling. I don't like making jo- Lauren mad. She's. Lauren will give you crap. Uh, uh, Coleman's. <laughs> Coleman's wife will just don't ever say anything about Coleman. She will come. She will bring the wrath oh of God gosh. down upon you. <laughs> Do you, man, <laughs> wrestling Coleman. Coleman. <laughs> Jessica, that was a saga. I picked Reese Humphrey to beat Coleman Scott once. It was, <laughs> it was not well received. She's. I was so complimentary she's too. Cool though. We played craps. One she's time, great. One time. Wrestling wise, awesome some family. badass ladies. They, you gotta be to to support. Wait, support hold these on. Dudes. You're ducking. Yeah, you're ducking the question. I don't. I don't have a full breakdown. Of All it. right, gotta, breakdown gotta, is forthcoming. We have till May seventeenth live yeah. on FlowWrestling.org. I'm kind of mired in pound for pound right spike now. ball rankings of the FRL team. Um, Kyle Brackey's number is, one. Brackey's one. Willie's four. Pretty simple. Willie, uh, I'm unco- I'm I'm better than Nomad, so I'm two. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh, Brackey this me. Group? Willie yeah. doesn't play enough. He yeah. only plays. I don't play that much. Yeah. I'm all right though. We should do the whole the whole squad. Everyone that plays, because Mike Mike and Kyle, that's a um, are I pretty agree. good. I agree. There's tears. Mike and Kyle, I think, are the Mike Mal behind the dirt. Hey, what's up? Those two are the top two. Then there's a there's another tier that involves Holmes, me, Bader, and probably Nomad. The other thing is it depends on the day. And Spay. Like sometimes. Maybe there's two tiers. I think there's probably three tiers. I don't know if I want to get that particular. Because sometimes Michael, you know, he'll be kind of. Did he say it depends on the time of Wobbling day? Wobbling about. Yes. It, no, not time of day. It depends on the day. I think it depends on the tides. So Mike's better on Thursdays? I'm just saying. So no, we all have I our ups get and what Nomad's saying. Yeah, like any given, There's days where you're, you're just, just completely hot. off. Yeah. yeah. Or you're Did right. have, I swear, I've had days where I was absolutely on fire. Yeah. You wouldn't know, Willie. You, don't you wouldn't know. You're a enough. fake spike baller. Yeah. You're not even in this conversation. You barely even watch. Fraud. You're a fraud. And there's also there's also <laughs> different roles you play depending upon who's on your team, right? That's accurate. Sometimes there's I'm more of a distributor. So right. if me and uh 
you know, Bader play together, it's a little tougher because we both are, are natural givers. I like playing right. with Bader. Uh, Bader passes well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when I, I I like setting up Bracky for for Spike because he's a better spiker than me. Mm-hmm. So I like to cover the ground and be the distributor. We should take Spike Ball when we go to Final X, each city. We oh we oh we we have this road trip pa- plan, guys. Is this still in its uh the planning stages? It's gonna be all time. We're gonna. Did that go anywhere? Last it's happening. I, last time I checked, we couldn't find a van. No, oh, we, we got a van. We got a van down by the river, and we're taking it places. It's great. Woo! How many, how many does it seat? Twelve passenger. passenger van. It seats twelve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what that means? Are we hiring a driver? Or I'm, a, Nick, I'm driving. No, it's no, you're twelve not. passenger van. Anyone can drive it. As Nick V said, we can have guests. Yes, we, we can have guests. Yes, it's going to be unbelievable. It's actually saving money as well. Hashtag money matters. Core values. Is it? Okay, it is. one more question okay. and we'll go. We're out of here. I'm going to make it a good one, guys. Um, oh, this is interesting. It's non wrestling. What's all of your favorite non wrestling sports? Asks Simon Bryce. Football, hands down. Kyle's football for Dunkey. sure. What's I can't wait for Nomad's answer. This is gonna be stupid. This, <laughs> this is gonna. Oh, hold on, can I make a prediction? I think it's gonna be baseball. I think it's go. gonna be lacrosse or archery. Oh shoot, it might be archery. <laughs> if it's archery, I'm punching them. Just be just because I want to mess with you guys. I think it's gonna be high. Oh no, just and you you just set it up. Uh, Sapak to Crow. Stop. <laughs> Stop! Look that up, kids. That 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 game Sounds is like wild. Is this something that that Indians played with, like with severed heads or something? Probably. Look it up. All right, I, I can't. Don't know how, to spell that. how can we spell sock to crow? S e p a k. S-E-P-A-K. Oh no. Pop Space to crow. I got it. Got yeah. it. You're saying it wrong. Incredible attacks. Oh, it's like kicking volume. This looks insane. <laughs> All right, we'll get this that's on. Not, that's not even a league. That's not even a sport. Is it a league? Oh, it's like volleyball kicking. This looks – we would be terrible. Is volleyball with your feet? Yeah. Yep. All right, one week to the NFL draft, though, boys. Yeah, yeah. hey, what's yours, Willie? Football. I'm going to say I think basketball is yeah. passing football my, for me. My actual one is basketball. But – Oh, you actually – I like ba- – I like, well, I like playoff basketball more than any football thing. I hate college basketball. Yeah, that's a terrible take. College basketball is awful. Like no one can make better shots. Better than any football thing? Uh yeah, that month I I just feel like I can really I can get I'll, into it. I tell it you, I like I like basketball. Basketball playoffs when the are playoffs awesome. come. Yes, the playoffs right? are awesome. That's what I'm saying. That's I what don't I'm, need to watch one but, game of the regular season. Well, I don't. I would much rather sit on my couch and not move for two straight days on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Any week, any week, than watch the NBA playoffs. Me, me and Kyle used to do that all week. Yes. Build fire mountains or charcoal mountains. Charcoal mountains, charcoal mountains on the grill. What? You know how you build a charcoal in a pyramid, Efren, to light it? Because that's the best way to do it. Efren, do you grill? Uh, All right, Efren grills. Gr- vegetables. <laughs> so Asparagus. <laughs> so I'm building the charcoal pyramid. Kyle used to come over on a Saturday and not leave till t- t- he'd be there for 36 straight hours. But one time I came out, I'm building a thing, and Kyle comes out and he goes, What you doing, Will? Building charcoal mountains? <laughs> yeah, Kyle, building a charcoal mountain. All right. Charcoal Mounds, with that we'll go play the outro thing. Today's Thursday. We've got a lot more U.S. Open related content coming at you. We yeah, think I'm basically working nonstop this weekend. Nonstop. US Open. Nonstop. We're, hey, we're, you get there Wednesday, right, Nomad? Yes, sir. You and Spay. Yep. I do too. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, we're going to hit that craps table so hard. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah, Spay taught place. me how to play. I'm sleeping on your couch. So, crap! I've room. never learned how to play. I I just look at that game. I'm like, this is too much. I love it. Look how many yeah, slots there are. Oh, it's hard. excellent. No, it's oh, not. It's not it, that complicated, guys. I, I'm sure it's simple. It is. But I just I look at it. and I'm like, what is it, this? It is intimidating to watch the first time. You're like, what is going on? And then you just you just pick up the rhythm. Don Bashata got me on that. Game. I'm never gonna be the same. All right. Thanks so much, guys. We will see you next time. Thank you for listening. Thank <laughs> you.